Welcome back to Beneath the Long Man's Feet. Now, I said recently that I'll do some of the older tales as well as my own stories and poems. So I have for you here a tale from Welsh folklore, from Welsh mythology. It's a story called Beth Gellert, the tomb or grave of Gellert. And it's a cautionary tale of betrayal. (laughs) I hope you like it. Now, many, many years ago, Wales was a series of kingdoms, each ruled by a different prince. And one of those princes, Prince Llewellyn, ruled in Gwynedd. Now, the Prince Llewellyn, he was a fine young man. He ruled well and he was fair. But there were two things he liked most in the world. The first was hunting. Now, I know what you're thinking, hunting's bad, but we're not talking about a load of red-coated yahoos crashing through the country after a a solitary fox. No, we're talking about a time when hunting was was a bit more. Yes, it was still the sport of kings and, and, and the nobles, but they used to eat what they hunted. Hunting used to feed their estates as well, so perhaps it wasn't so bad. And the second thing that Prince Llewellyn loved more than anything else was his faithful hound, Gellert. He had had Gellert since he was a a puppy and he had reared him and he was his most faithful, loving friend. He was friendly and loving to his friends and his family, but he was fierce and loyal and the best hunting dog that any man could hope for. Now, I understand the love a man can have for his hound. I'm in the woods here with my dog, Cinders, as always, and I can, I can feel the love that Llewellyn had for his faithful hound, for I feel the same way about Cinders. But I digress. One day, something happened that made Llewellyn even happier than his hunting and his faithful hound. He got married. He fell in love and met a beautiful princess. And of course, a man and a woman get together and they they do what comes natural. And the princess, Llewellyn's wife, bore him a beautiful baby son. Llewellyn had an heir to the kingdom of Gwyneth. He could not be happier. The hunting was good. He had a fantastic hound, a beautiful wife, and a wonderful strong heir to his kingdom. And when the baby was born, Llewellyn stayed at home for weeks, staying by his wife's side, helping to look after the child. So happy was he. Until one day his wife said, Llewellyn, it has been lovely having you here these last few weeks. But for the love of the gods, will you please get out from under my feet? Go hunting or do something, please. Bring us some good food. Well, Llewellyn, suitably chastened, went to the courtyard and called his men. And they got their armour and their spears and their arrows and they called their hunting dogs and their horses and they waited for Llewellyn. And Llewellyn called for Gellert. But his faithful hound was nowhere to be seen. Llewellyn called again for Gellert. Most unusual for him not to come. But still, there was no sign of the faithful dog. And finally, he whistled his special whistle, which never failed to recall Gellert from wherever he was back to the prince's side. But even that special whistle did not yield in Gellert. Gellert was nowhere to be seen. By now, his men and the dogs and the horses were getting restless, and the prince had to leave on his hunt without his hound Gellert. He was in a foul mood as a result, and the hunting that day was was meagre. It was uh, not very successful. So when they came back to the castle with their small fare, the prince still had this fugue about him, and he decided to go and visit his son to lift this bad mood. So when he got to the nursery, there was a scene of absolute chaos that met his eye. The furniture was everywhere, wardrobes upturned, dressing tables upturned, the beds, the cots, all upturned, and there was not a sign of his baby son anywhere. And it was at that moment that his hound, Gellert, came towards him, and his muzzle was all covered in blood and gore. And Llewellyn roared and thought his faithful dog had killed his son, and he pulled out his sword and he thrust it into the dog's heart. 
and the dog, as he died, Gellert gave him such a look of betrayal and hurt that you have never seen before. And as Llewellyn, crying himself, pulled the sword from his faithful hound, he heard a sound. It was the sound of a baby crying. Well, he quickly he lifted up the bed and the covers, and there, there was his baby son lying unharmed on the floor. And right next to his son was the body of a huge grey wolf with its throat ripped out. And Llewellyn realised at once what must have happened. His faithful hound Gellert had stayed in the nursery to protect his son from this grey wolf. He was guilty of judging a nut by the husk. He was told there was a bull with horns that does not butt, but he still accused it of doing the butting. He could not believe what he had done. He was filled with grief and remorse. He called the palace aides about him to take his son back to his mother. And then he scooped the body of Gellert in his arms and he carried him to the slopes of Irwitha. Now, Irwitha is the mountain that uh, we English insist on calling Mount Snowdon, but Irwitha is its correct name. And there on the slopes of that mountain, he buried Gellert and he raised a cairn around the body of his faithful hound, Beth Gellert, the tomb of Gellert. And from that day on, Prince Llewellyn was not quite as carefree, but he was wiser. He never made a rash decision again in his life. And to this day, my friends, if you visit Iwitha, the slopes of Mount Snowdon, you will see the tomb of Gellert is still there. And if you have disloyalty or betrayal in your heart, you will be haunted by the anguished howls of Gellert as he walks the slopes of Iwitha, mourning his disloyal betrayal. So my friends, if I may give you a piece of advice, never judge a book by its cover. And to take the words from one of my favorite Druid prayers, may calm always be your mantle and may truth always be in your hearts. So that was my telling of the tale of Beth Gallant. I hope you liked it. Drop me a line on Beneath the Long Man's Feet, Facebook or YouTube. Let me know your comments. It's always good to hear from you. But now, as always, and until we meet again, my friends, I will bid you hail and farewell. Mm -hmm.